As we talk about this building, you'll see that the art and architecture are integrated and they come together to tell many stories of the culture, the commerce, and the history of Ohio. And the architect, whose name was Harry Hake, he was from Cincinnati, begins the story of Ohio here on the ground floor with a tribute to the Native Americans. This is an Art Deco interpretation of a design or designs that you might see on Native American blankets, pottery. And if you look up at the lights, the fixtures, you have the bow and arrows. We have Native American leaders, Little Turtle, Tecumseh. This is a general scene, a bas-relief scene of two young Native Americans. Here you have the columns, the, the barreled ceiling, the vaulted ceiling, mosaic tile. So he combined the, the classic architecture with the, the uh, clean lines, the colors of Art Deco, and they work together just perfectly. Here in the elevator lobby, the theme shifts, and this speaks to the natural resources and the economy of Ohio. Here we have the Roman goddess Ceres. She was the, the Roman and Greek goddess of, of grain. Cereal comes from Ceres. So this represents agriculture. At the opposite end is Vulcan, the Roman god of fire. And so you have the classical balance. You have agriculture and with fire, Vulcan represents industry. So those were the two mainstays when this building opened, the two mainstays of the Ohio economy. This is another great example of Art Deco. There aren't many tours where people say, check out the elevators, but here, check out the elevators. Again, you have that combination of metals, streamlined figures. In addition to Native American design, Art Deco was heavily influenced by African and Egyptian art. The building opened 81 years ago. It was known as the Ohio Department's building. It was the headquarters for the executive branch of government. The officials wanted to have a room for public hearings where the public would pay attention and would say, this is important work. All of this artwork was here when the doors opened 81 years ago. It was painted by Rudolf Scheffler, who is from Dresden, Germany. The style is Rococo. Um, and because of the sweeping nature of the, of the murals, uh, he was once quoted as comparing himself to Michelangelo. No small ego. The panorama in the rear of the room depicts Marietta, which was the first settlement in the Northwest Territory. There are 13 figures in the uh, panorama each one representing one of the original 13 states. This is the South Hearing Room. And the artwork here portrays overall the early commerce in Ohio, beginning at the earliest point when the uh, French and the Native Americans were, were trading furs and animals and then it progresses, the story progresses and you can see the integration of, of the waterway and the importance of transportation. It's done almost in a naive style. Uh, one person compared it to the, to the art style of uh, Grandma Moses. It's counterbalanced with what at the time, when, when uh, the, the artist, H.H. H. Wessel from Cincinnati, was uh, painted contemporary Ohio, what was certainly contemporary then. The trains have replaced the canals. 
flight is now part of the overall transportation pictures. And you also see the, the industrial centers of the state. We're now in the North Hearing Room. The art was done by a Cincinnati artist, John Homer. And he tells a story and it goes counterclockwise. It shows early Ohio carving out of the forest a bucolic scene, a, a, the very beginnings of a rustic economy. And then you go across the window and you land in a more modern time with the turbines and generators, the rock quarry, the construction, the operation, factory scene, and the energy fields of Southeast Ohio.